Welcome, welcome to you in the space tutorial for neat Clapper Rich. Is it Clapper Rick or Clapper Rich? Yeah. Um, yeah. So I think I'm just going to start by doing a new game so I can show you kind of how it all starts here. Um, this is basically it. Galaxy, pick the type, how large it's going to be as well, uh, right here. Large, medium, small, blah, 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 huge. Uh, how many empires? Uh, basically, how many other factions? Uh, age of the systems, too. Usually, the ones with the younger, uh, hotter stars will have more lava or barren type systems, which kind of corresponds with uh, real life, I guess, real science. Um, now, then you get to, you know, you can go into the advanced start here and you can pick, uh, you can get a little more technical on, um, you know, how many you want, how big it is going to be, resources, that kind of stuff. Uh, I usually just keep this on normal, but you can change it however you want, obviously. Then you get into the empires. Now there's all these different empires here. United Empire is kind of more of a military slash, um, corporation kind of thing. Um, they get some pretty cool ships. The Sulfons are probably one of my favorite ones, uh, but they're more science-based, um, and they try to go for a science victory. We'll talk about that a little later. The Hisho are more militaristic. They're kind of like an avian race as well. Um, they get certain bonuses, and you can see that over here if you pick on any of these factions you'll see all these different bonuses they get we'll get into that a little later uh, the amoebas uh, same kind of thing they're usually more of like exploration diplomacy they go for a different type of victory which would be exploration uh, same with the automatons auto or automatons Auto automatons yeah uh, Sheridan's pretty m militaristic they're humans too cravers are like an insect slash human hybrid people they've been around for a long time they're more militaristic and complete destruction uh, you once you take a place you can literally just destroy the planet itself Horatio is kind of like a economic and military um, they tend to be neutral when you fight with them and really some pretty good allies uh, because they do lots of trading stuff uh, good with that Sawyers they're kind of just more military slash uh, exploration as well. Pilgrims, uh, exploration and diplomacy, um, mainly diplomacy. Harmony, I've never really had to deal with Harmony too much. That's part of the new expansion as well. Um, Valters, kind of science. They're your Terran science, so human science kind of uh, focus. Now you can also make your own over here where the add button is. So you can pick one, uh, make the name, change the affinity. What that means is that you the faction trait that they get, and each faction has different ones. You can also change the appearance if you want to. All it does is really just uh, change the visuals into um, their appearance. So you can have like Valter's uh, affinity and look like Harmony kind of thing. Um, and then there's all these traits. Now as you can see there's plus, there's this green and red which are negative and positive traits. Now as you can see on the side here there's a bunch of different categories. Um, and most of them are positive and some of them are really expensive uh, like you see here. Um, but they do quite a bit. Now sometimes you, when you start getting and looking at how you build your solar systems when we get to that point you'll realize um, there's a lot of stuff in the tech tree that uh, will do the same things as some of these traits so what I tend to do um, is usually try to get some technology really quickly like for instance when I made these guys I gave them um, different like so this one's legendary heroes they get experience on hiring um, that's faction trait there so basically if I get captured by 
uh, someone else, they get a huge um, negative debuff on them when they're trying to take over my base. Scientists, more science. Isolation shields, um, that's a tech that gives me, I believe, um, let's read it here real quick. I have to look at that one again. Uh, defense per system as well, based on populations, and we'll get to that uh, earlier or later. That little human looking thing is a one population. So you'll see when we start getting into the solar system, you'll see some have like three population, four or up to seven, and you can even increase it with certain tech um, or certain science that you get. Um, here's another one that really benefits um, is medium, small, and tiny, so it gave me another uh, increase in population. And your population will determine, you know, how much production your uh, planet generates, how much money it makes, um, and then of course you have to have a certain amount of food to to uh, uh, accommodate that population. Um, now this is a Valter's uh, customization. I just realized that, so because I didn't definitely didn't put black thumbs on there, because um, I definitely wouldn't put negative food. But if you go back here, we can look at the one that I made. So here you can see that I gave him a few technologies right off the bat, which would be arid uh, epigenetics, which is basically colonization of arid planets. Um, gave him crowded planets as well. Gave him a defensive buff. Gave him. A more ship tonnage, which means you more defense and more uh, ship modules you can put on them. Uh, optimistic, basically that finger or that thumbs up is happiness, I guess if you want to give them approval. Uh, I gave them a debuff on um, movement range because there's a lot of stuff in the exploration tech tree that gives you movement and I had to come up with the 65 points here to spend. If you go over that, you can't start it. You have to be at 65 or below. Um, and then Xenobotany, which basically colonized Tundra. At the very beginning, you'll get a solar system and you can only inhabit one uh, planet. And then you'll notice when you click on this solar system, there'll be like four other planets, but you can't colonize them yet because you don't insert technology. So what I did is basically give me those two technologies at the very beginning so that I can produce quicker and faster and get a heads up on people. So that's a basic rundown of factions. Um, once you get in the game or if you purchase it, it'll give you a better idea of like, uh, you know, different things that they do. Um, and yeah, each ship looks different. They all have their kind of own artwork and their own ship models, that kind of stuff. Um, settings, I usually play on easy because that's the only time I've ever been able to beat it. Uh, when I get to normal, I even tried hard once and I just get destroyed. Um, normal, keep it on normal. There's no reason to make it really fast or really slow. Unless you are, of course, off on a certain time frame. So what I'll do here is just, um, we'll go ahead and start this so I can show you a quick tutorial on bases and stuff. So here you are. Uh, this is kind of the view here. This is your map right now. Of course, this is a galaxy. You don't have any of it discovered yet. Uh, it gave us a spiral. There are one, two, three, four, six, seven, eight, eight uh, spirals surrounded by a black hole in the middle or whatever in the middle. Um, you see these little stars here? If you explore them, so you take your ship and you, well, let's do this first. This is colonization, this little flag here. So if you were on a solar system, like so, if any of these were colonizable, it would say right here, or it's a colonized. Um, so I don't have the technology to colonize these yet, but they go through here, they tell you the size of it and what type they are. Now, as you can see up here, these little things here are food, production, dust, which is your money, and science. And then up here is where it tells you how much you have in the entire system. Up here it tells you how much population you have in the entire system. Right now I have three of seven because this is the only one I've colonized. 
this is of course your approval rating everyone's happy right here um, if you have a hero assigned they'll show up here you'll be able to click on them and see their traits uh, this resources tab will tell you uh, basically what it says here what kind of strategic resources are there available and what kind of luxury ones are now luxury ones are good because they'll give you more approval too if you're trading with other people as well and this will also tell you how many trade routes by default you get two trade routes um, there's plenty of tech that'll allow you in the diplomacy uh, tech tree to increase trade routes which of course increases money increases approval you can also trade science and different um, tech bonuses to people um, down here is where you basically build uh, certain things after you've unlocked them in the t uh, tech tree so this is where you would do system improvements this is your hangers so these are the ships you can make um, you, know, you can look at them here clan ship valkyrie probe kind of lame uh, right now of course and then improvements this tab over here tells you uh, you know what you have built on this solar system this hangar tab basically these are the ships you can build you put them in a queue a build queue here and then they show up in your hangar and they stay in the hangar until you make a fleet um, which we'll go ahead and make one uh, nine turns I can see forever we're going to this. Every time you colonize the planet, you want to click on it and exploit it. Um, so these are the different starting exploitations you get. Um, usually at the very beginning, I tend to, since Terran uh, planets are by default usually have quite a bit of food on them, I don't give them the food exploitation, even though, you know, you get a bonus one on Terran. Um, if you look here, you can get a bonus one per population on planet, or plus one on planet, or plus one on planet for science, dust, and production. So you just take a look at this and you go, hmm, what am I lowest on? You know, it'd be really helpful if I had more production right now, so I'm going to pick production. That way I can build things quicker, I can build my ships quicker, I can build improvements to the, to the um, solar system quicker. Uh, it's a quick rundown on the solar system. Um, this is your actual kind of area here. Um, any luxury resources will show up up on here. Any strategic resources once discovered which will show up here. And we'll get into that other. This is your kind of message queue. Uh, whatever pops up. So at the very beginning you get three heroes. Uh, that you can pick from and hire and each one has a different trait kind of this is your fleet queue so if you have some that are just sitting around doing nothing it, they'll show up here um, and then we can go into um, ships here so if I highlight both of these I can merge them into a fleet uh, you can always disband them as well and once you disband them they'll go into your hangar here once they're in the hangar, you just hit create, once highlighted, and they'll create a new uh, fleet again. Um, now you can always just disband again if you don't want those ones in there and just click on one, create, click, create. That creates two separate fleets. So this one's a clan ship, which means it's a colonizer. So right now I'm going to put it on wait, this little clock here. So I don't want to do anything yet because I want to discover this solar system, see which planets I want to go to. This guy is a probe and this allows him to automatically explore. So you click that and he takes off. So you don't have to worry about him until he's done finishing your solar system area. So he'll go to this planet, explore it, and then he'll go to the next one or he'll go to another one and he'll just keep exploring until you're done. Every time you explore one you get um, an anomaly which is this thing. It could be, most of the time it's, ne it's positive, sometimes it's negative uh, depending on what happens. Uh, so that's a quick rundown of this here. Up here you have your galaxy. So this is basically your status and score compared to everyone else. It says no contact because you haven't seen them yet. And then that's the score. This is an overall score too. So if you're excelling in military, you might be doing poor in science and diplomacy. So it will not reflect, uh, I guess, how well you're doing compared to... Um, well, I guess that's kind of what it does. 
overall, but that doesn't mean you can't just go in and completely destroy someone because you're totally military supremacy over them. Um, which a lot of factions will actually do that. Um, there are some factions that will just be totally military and try to conquer and kill everything. Others will be more of a science based, so they'll do as much science as possible to get the science victory. Um, this is current status, breakdown of all your planets, basically, all your systems. Like again, it will tell you the system name, how much population, their approval, what they're making, what you're currently building, what's in the hangar. Your tax rate is a good way to um, get approval. Uh, when you start making a lot of money, um, it's not a bad idea to turn this down to like 30 or 25 percent. As you can see, it'll fluctuate your approval rating. I usually keep it at 25. Um, and yeah, it doesn't look like we're making, we're only getting two turn, right? It's pretty shitty. So at the very beginning, you keep it at 40, try to make as much as you can. And then when you have system improvements that where you're making a shit ton, you know, turn it down a bit so you can boost your approval because expansion will cause disapproval or overpopulation will cause disapproval or if you have certain traits and if you go to war it'll cause disapproval as well some things you just can't obviously handle like if someone causes war against you and you're a peaceful nation then you'll get a disapproval you gotta have you gotta be fluctual with what you kind of do up here's your science and your tech trees. Here they are. Military up here. This guy, warfare, science, exploration, and diplomacy. Um, now each one of them has all sorts of things to upgrade. And, you know, this over here is mainly trading. Um, trading with alien factions, um, ex exploratory stuff like here's some luxury resources uh, there's also things in here for um, bonus to approval uh, there's also things in here for making more money um, that's really what it is trading money uh, diplomacy is what this is down here obviously exploration um, this allows you to move further throughout the galaxy uh, allows you to colonize different planets different types of planets this also unlocks different ship classes, which we'll get to, um, and you'll want that because they grab, they give you extra base tonnage, so you can make a bigger, badder ship, um, and then eventually everyone's got a dreadnought class, which would be this guy down here. Uh, and then this also has terraforming, so if you find a planet you hate, you can basically turn it into something you want. Um, this also will reduce anomalies which can be pretty detrimental during exploration and if you have a negative one on there you can get like negative 30 disapproval on some of those places and over here is the science this will give you obviously more science but it also unlocks all the strategic resources that you need all these little purple highlighted ones is a strategic resource and you'll need these to upgrade your ships basically or t certain production or certain buildings that you try to produce in solar systems this is all science based. It all increases um uh, what's the word? It all increases your ship um defenses, um support modules. So like a bigger engine, uh more tonnage. Um here, here, even that's more ship, more tonnage. There's also um, like you saw in the previous video during the fight, this, when you unlock solar mining, it allows you to use this, uh, counter in a battle, uh, this one as well. And this is all beam oriented, so lasers, um, all science. And then of course war. So this is all invasion and basically weapons, defenses for your ship, invasions for your ship. Um, bombers, fighters, that kind of stuff. It's all military. That's all this tree is. Um, obviously super useful because you want to keep an edge up on your opponents. Uh, at the very beginning, some of them go like straight kinetic damage. So having high kinetic armor is really good. And then switching to having kinetic armor and beam damage 
uh, is a really good strategy because you'll come uh, I'll come up on these guys and they'll have high um, kinetic damage and then high kinetic uh, uh, defenses. So you can block with your kinetic defense and then hit them with beam and they uh, get destroyed. Um, that's one thing you want to do is constantly kind of send a probe out and see who you're messing with or see who what they're rocking uh, as far as either missiles, kinetic, or beam weaponry. That's the tech tree. You can read more into it if you play. Uh, here's your military. So basically all your ships um, and their combat power, their movement, and their uh, command points. Command points is how many ships you can actually put in your fleet. So right now I can only have five in this fleet. And as you unlock more tech, you can get like 20 something, 24 in a fleet. So they can get pretty big. Also, some ships um, cost more points. So like these probes cost one point. These little guys. This clan ship costs one point. So does this Valkyr. Which is pretty much the same thing as this probe. Just a Kind of attack stuff on it. Up here, you'll see how many command points they use, how many ton how much tonnage they're using, how much life, how much accuracy, how much attack, how much it costs to produce them. This is again movement, or I guess military power. Oh, I'm sorry, that's invasion. Sorry, invasion power. Um, and that's the invasion score. If you have a high invasion score, you can instantly invade a place, especially if you have troops. If you have troops on your invasion uh, ships, you can get there and instantly invade it. And if you have a good percentage, it's worth invading it right away because then you take over. Um, here's your diplomacy. So I haven't discovered anyone. Once you discover them, they'll show up on these pedestals. And then it'll show, there'll be a link here, which I'll go into. I'll pull up an existing file and we'll look at that and show you that. Um, here are your heroes. Right now I have zero active because I can't afford them. Here are the ones that are in my queue. So as you can see, they're all level 1. This is how much your first one costs to uh, hire. Your next one I believe is 80 and then the next one after that is 200. And then they get progressively more expensive as you hire more heroes. But they're very useful. So this one, as you can see, has two different traits. Administrator and Pilot. Um, and basically that means they can be a great planet uh, leader or they can be a great fighter. This one is administrator and corporate. So this guy would probably be the best for uh, managing a solar system. Now this guy, he's got commander and pilot. So he's probably the best at fighting. Um, and I'd probably hire him first or this guy first, depending on how I want to start or how mean the other people are at the very beginning. So in turn, oh, it says I'm not making any. It'll prompt you too if you if you screw something up. So it says I'm not uh, researching anything. So turn will go by, and you can see the little bar here. That little white bar, white blue bar, will is your production. It measures that. So once it's full this will be complete. This is the time it takes four turns to exploit this planet. This, um, if you already have ships in movement, just hit that and they'll go. So, he explored this first one. Here's the anomaly, or discovery anomaly. On this system, I get plus 20% food for 10 turns. Pretty badass. And it looks like there's one I can colonize. Tundra. Now, see, if I didn't choose that research at the very beginning for my faction, I wouldn't be able to colonize this. This would just be three dead planets or useless planets for me, pretty much. Something to note right now, you see this little uh, kind of ghost stream, I guess is what it's called? That's actually a wormhole. So the only way I could explore further is if I upgrade um, one of my science places, this one here, takes a while. This unlocks space travel via wormholes. So it takes a while to get to that and then once you do, it allows you to further explore all the other solar systems. Right now you're kind of limited to your area. It allows you to kind of build and not have to... Wow, 
not have to explore um, or worry about other people. Wow. Someone's going to snag that spot. So this guy's going to continue to explore. I think that'll conclude our basic one. For now, I'll just show you. I'll take this colonized ship. I'll move him over here. We're going to go colonize Esh. Kind of slow at the beginning, but it allows you to really focus on kind of building um, and figuring out what you want to do. So these are all system improvements. Now, when I click this, as you can see, it's going to give me a shit ton of uh, production, which is great. I need that. But at the very bottom, you can see this says negative two dust um, on improvement. So every improvement you make on a solar system will cost you dust, which also in turn will then obviously reduce the amount of money you make each turn. See, basic kind of system management stuff, strategy stuff. La di da di da. So this guy's just gonna continue to explore. Once I get here, I'm gonna colonize and hit this little button down here. And I'll pick the one. Yeah, you colonize. Good job. And then you go in here. You gotta explain it. So this one obviously has pretty low food. So I'm like, ah, she gonna need food. So plus one on planet. Now, one important thing to note is once you start developing this entire system and you have a shit ton of food, you can always come back in here and choose a different exploitation. So you're not stuck with that. Okay, so what I'm going to do now is load up one of my other games to show you a broader idea of what happens once you're kind of established. the fuck oh there we go okay it is a big it's a lot of shit going on so big change from uh, what we just saw over here you can see all these different factions different colors these are all different people uh, I'm at war with these guys over here which is why I can't see them right now um, I'm also at war with blue here now they look like they have a lot of stuff going on but they really don't because um, I've been destroying them so we'll take a look over here at the military. These are my ships right now. I have a level 22 hero hanging out in here. This is their attack power. This is their invasion score. As you can see, his is quite low compared to this one because I have some ships tailored specifically to invade. Um, now, this time here, uh, I have a lower invasion power than the system defense. So it's not. I can't do it, basically, is what it's saying. It's going to take me a thousand turns and that won't change actually. It'll just say 0% and 0% gain per turn as you can see. So it's one thing to note. Now you, you can use probe ships to go through and check these places out and then obviously you can look at their system defense and be like, oh, I don't have enough. I'm not going to invade that one. But on this one, I do. This one that has 8,243, he can he's got a lot more than it so two percent per change my progress is at eleven percent thirty two more turns to take this place now like I said earlier if you have ships that have troops you can instantly invade I do not I just have ships that have siege weapons so they're basically pounding the solar system from the outer rings and in the submission um, what I am doing is developing ships over here Invasion 4 that do have troops that do not have troops. They just have really high siege power. So when those guys are done, <coughs> I'll be bringing them over basically to take over their shit. Um, these guys are on defense over here. You can set them up and just let them creep in your solar systems. Um, 
and put them on defensive mode. So that means anything that comes in here, if they're not friendly, they get stuck here and I can choose whether or not to let them out or fight them. Um, so here's what some of the, the systems look like now once you get in there. Uh, you can see that there's a huge change in the amount that you make in. This also has a hero in it. Also has a bunch of strategic resources and a bunch of trade that I'm doing with other people. Um, now, people have populated the lava and the desert and all these different ones, um, which in turn generates more of these fids, which is food, uh, industry, uh, science, and dust. Food, industry, dust, science, yep. Um, now down here are all these different uh, improvements because my tech tree is large. So everything blue that you see, the blue dots, is everything I've researched. Green is in queue. Um, yellow is basically faction-oriented ones. So each faction gets different ones. Um, mine uh, get a lot of planet defense score. So even though you invade my place, these guys want to cease fire. Um, That will do it for now. We'll move everyone back. Or not. Well, they'll move eventually. Um, so, these guys are all you know, colonize, they're all maxed out on population, so I'm basically just producing a shit ton of ships and money right now to destroy everything. Um, it takes quite a while to get this far. I'm 232 turns in. Um, so, yeah. I guess that kind of summarizes it. Right now, making an 11.45 per turn, I'm in fourth place, uh, according to FIDS. According to this, I am in fourth place. Now, as you can see, the SOFONs over here have a really high score compared to mine, but I destroy them in the military part. Um, they've tried to take my system twice now, and I just destroy them. The people that I just, dis these blue people that I were dis destroying there, um, also have a higher score so when you look at these status and score don't you know think you're doing horrible unless you're like you know unless you're the United Empire you know that dark green that's that's pretty low but to be fair they don't have a whole lot I think they're over here doing shit failing at life um I think that's it Influence will create these huge bubbles that you see. You can uh, take over an influential area with your own influence. As you can see, the blue is taking over yellow here. Basically, that means yellow's influence is super low because of either the population amount or they don't have some of the upgrades. Now, over here in Virac, um, where this way I just sent this guy over here, he's taking this place over and he's going to turn it into. A little staging area so that I can be outside my solar system and still be able to attack and, and move. Um, which you can do. I hope that made sense. Just outside my solar system and still have like a, a base. Um, yeah. Um, that's about it. Ooh, there's not much on there. The system defense is really low. I should change that. I will. Costs a lot though. Um, let me know if you have any questions, I guess. Or if I talk too fast, or if you have uh, something. Or I want a tutorial on something else. Um, the pre-battle stage, you kind of saw on the other one. There's not much to it other than picking strategies and kind of sizing up your opponent. Um, sometimes you know right away if you're going to destroy someone or if you will get destroyed based on what type of armor. Oh, let's go into ships. We'll go into ships. Forgot about that. Okay. So, let's go here. I want to make a ship. So these are the different ships I've made. I've labeled them different. 
Um, let's say I want to make the ship, I'll just queue in and they'll start building it. Uh, four turns to build that guy. If I go up here, it tells me what ship designs I have available. So like, here's my carrier. He's got, um, I believe, two bombers and or two fighters and one bomber. Um, so whenever he fights, he'll deploy those out. This one is mainly a kinetic damage dealer. Um, this guy is a missile damage dealer. You'll see down here. These little ones don't ever underestimate these guys. If you pack them full of powerful missiles, they could be pretty devastating. Um, you don't need very many missiles to take a ship down. If they do not have missile defense, they'll go down right away. Um, you can also add, once you unlock a different ship type, you can add them up here. Uh, I'm still working on that. I think I have uh, a few more turns to go before I have that. But once that ship is unlocked, it'll show up here and you can pick through and make it. Um, and just drag it around like here, get a good look at it. <coughs> and then down here is where your weapons and defense modules are. So shields, counter beams, uh, deflect counters kinetic, flak counters missile. Your support modules down here are basically, you know, population killers, bombs, bombs. This will kill buildings, this will kill population. This is just a more siege, so basically just gives you a shit ton of siege power. Um, this one is damage to weapons. This is actual physical armor and HP and defense on the ship. This one is basically so that you do not get a negative debuff when you colonize. Um, you basically put that with your clan ship. I rarely ever use it. I don't, I just never do. Engine obviously allows you to, um, uh, it gives you an invasion bonus and allows you to move further. Scout gives you an accuracy bonus, um, as well as a influence or a sight range. So like once you move in to a solar system, you can see further. Repair, that's basically um, a module that allows you to get health back after a battle or after a phase, I'm sorry. So which could be really useful if you have a high one because, you know, you could take a, quite a bit of damage and it could really turn the battle. Um, it costs quite a bit, though, in my opinion. Um, but if you're not putting an engine on something, it's not a bad idea. Tonnage has no negative effects. It gives you a bonus amount of um, tonnage on your ship right here. So you can only put 112 on there. If I put this tonnage, it gives me now 147. So now the amount of uh, modules I can put on there is increased. Here's your special modules, bombers, fighters, troops. This is all basically for invasion. Um, this is to ship defense so this is really useful um, um, to maybe uh, to um, fuck, what am I talking about fighting other bombers and fighters which which can be good um, so here's a bunch of different my ships all these different ones that's kind of a brief rundown. I hope that's enough. Let me know if you have any questions.